Guys, it's cold outside, and in today's video, I've got the winter jackets that every man needs to know about so that you can use this information to go out there and find the right jacket for you. You ready? Let's do this. All right, gents, so this is the way the video is going to work. I'm going to start with casual jackets, make my way through the formal jackets, put them on, and talk about them. You ready? Let's do it. First up, we've got this casual, sporty, down-filled, quilt style jacket. Now quilt style, these are going to be jackets that have basically these individual pockets. This is great whenever you use something like down, it's going to prevent it from bunching up. Now down, I absolutely think that this is a great material for insulation and that's historically why it's been used. But a great thing about this is that I can crush up this jacket, put it at the bottom of my bag and I can take it with me anywhere, put it on, it's going to do a great job insulating, keeping in the heat. The bad part about down, you get this jacket wet, all of a sudden it's going to lose its properties. Now, now it's sporty because of the color, the bright green here, the bright yellow on the inside and the buttons and the overall zipper. The design of this is more of a sport design. Next up, we've got the denim Sherpa jacket. It's in a bomber style. So a bomber style is basically going to have this material right over here or a type of fur, basically a type of lining that you can see on the outside near the collar. And then you're going to have the pockets right here and then the pockets right here. Now, the outer part you're going to see is made of denim or jean material. You'll also see this as the insulated truck jacket and insulated jean jacket. When it comes down to it, this is going to be the hardier, more cold weather version of the basic jean jacket. So why would you want to have a jacket like this in your wardrobe? I think it's great because it has a very Western kind of a cowboy feel and it's great workwear. Next up, we've got a gray field style jacket with a twill weave to it made from cotton and a bit of synthetic material. Now, I like this jacket because gray, again, a non-color, going to pretty much match anything in your wardrobe. But let's talk about the field style. So the field style is going to have usually two breast pockets, two large pockets right here. These pockets down at the bottom are important. Historically, they were for carrying ammunition, hence the field jacket. And this was something a lot of gentlemen used to take hunting. It also should have two pockets right behind those lower pockets where you can put your hands and keep your hands warm. Now, the inside of this jacket has a nice feature, and I love it when jackets do this, when they actually have a vest that could be removable. It's basically adding an extra layer of insulation. So, if it's a bit warmer outside, I could take this out. If it's colder, then I simply have this extra layer right here in on my core area. Again, we've got another field jacket. This one does not have the breast pockets, but it does have the large signature ammunition pockets down at the bottom. In addition, a good, nice place to put my hands. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this jacket is the wax canvas outer material. This has been around for over 200 years, has been loved by hunters and everyone because it's relatively inexpensive. It uses cotton, but you just can apply some wax on this and you do need to re-wax these jackets. Wax is hydrophobic, which basically means it will repel water. It's just a very durable material and inexpensive, hence why it was sought after. All right, so we've got another quilted jacket. This one actually is not using down. It's using a synthetic material. The great thing about this, this jacket can get wet and it's still going to do a good job of keeping me warm. Now, the style you're going to notice again is a field. Not exactly classic because the pockets down, he down here are not huge and it doesn't really have a place for me to put my hands, but it does have the double-breasted pockets. It's got the large pockets right down here. And let's talk about the color. This dark olive green right here, very different, not nearly as loud as that bright green I showed you earlier. Earlier, but this one still does have a sporty flair to it and that's because it's a classic hunting color combination. So you got the bright orange here with the olive green, again a classic sporty combination related to old school hunting. All right, so now we're talking about the leather jacket, one of my favorite jackets out there because it comes in such a wide variety of different styles. You've got bomber, you've got biker, you've got the flight jacket, so many different options. So let's talk about the classic biker jacket. We're talking in black. We're talking with large oversized zippers with buttons, a functional jacket that screams rebel. Hence, seeing it in the movie, Rebel Without a Cause, the wild one. Guys, these movies right here, they highlighted this jacket and that's when it first hit the scene, became very popular with not only people that were riding motorcycles, but people that wanted to stand out from the crowd. Now, one of the characteristics of the classic motorcycle jacket is that it has an overlap area. Now, the reason leather jackets are so popular 
Buckler, with motorcyclists, with race car drivers, with pilots, is leather has unique properties which you're not going to find in a lot of other materials. Number one, durability. So if you're racing on a motorcycle and you take a spill and you go sliding across the road, the leather actually does a pretty good job of protecting your own skin from that road rash. Next up, let's talk about wind resistance. So if you're up flying an aircraft, maybe an open cockpit airplane, actually it did a good job of keeping you warm, of keeping the wind from going in and just basically chilling your body. And let's talk about the coolness factor. The right leather jacket can make you look amazing. People, when they see it, they think strength. They think masculinity. Next up, let's talk about the parka style coat. So, this was developed by the Caribou Inuit people and basically it's all about the hood. Oftentimes, you're going to see them with fur linings uh, and that's going to be fake most of the time now. This was a very functional piece but they were a very heavy jacket, wind resistant, very well insulated, great jackets if you're going to be, going to be in sub-zero temperatures. Now, the classic rain jacket, the Macintosh, I wanted to talk about this even though it's not really a winter jacket. I know some of you guys actually don't get really low temperatures. So, I think it can be a winter jacket for those that deal with monsoon, you deal with a lot of rain, to have a lightweight shell that you can throw over anything and stay dry and hence stay a bit warmer. Next up, gentlemen, we've got the classic trench coat. Now, this trench coat is in a non-classic color. This one's navy. Classic is going to be beige. Now, the trench coat is a very interesting piece. It started off in the Boer War, then became popular in World War I in the trenches, hence called the trench coat, and it is now a men's classic staple. But I don't see a lot of guys pulling it off much anymore because they're a little bit harder to find and they are relatively expensive. And let's talk about the length of the trench coat. For most men, right above the knee is going to be a jacket that's going to best serve you, easier to get in and out of your vehicle. But if you're walking, you know, to and from work, if you commute a lot of time on the subway, maybe going for a trench coat that goes below the knee is going to be better for you. Next up, let's talk about the classic Peacoat, one of my favorite jackets because it has a military history and it's incredibly functional. So, the military history, this one came out of the US Navy, made popular 1930s during World War II and after, you know, everyone started getting out of the military. They sent all these jackets to surplus stores and they continue to be used by the Navy to this day. But this jacket right here is one that is incredibly functional. Now, it's not going to be as long as a trench. This one right here just goes past the buttocks but it's going to be heavier built, will fit right over a suit jacket and I think it looks great and I really like the way it doesn't break up the leg line and it actually can make a shorter man look taller. Next up, let's talk about the overcoat, but really quick, the top coat. So, I don't have a top coat. Top coats are really rare nowadays. They're oftentimes made from very lightweight materials like gabardine. They're more for show and to protect like your black tie attire. Now, an overcoat is the most formal jacket that I own and that I use and it's made to go over a suit. Now, you are going to find that overcoats sometimes are made to actually go all the way up but they may, most of them are going to be worn like this and this is a formal jacket, a formal coat to be worn worn with your jacket, a sports jacket, a suit jacket. Now, the length. I do think that if you want something that's going to be very functional in and out of vehicles, maybe get something about two to three inches above the knee. Now, colors, I like charcoal gray but you could go with black, you could also go with navy. All right, guys, now it's your turn. I want to hear from you down in the comments. What is your favorite jacket? What is your dream jacket? What are you going to add to your wardrobe? And if you want more, I've got a hundred style tips in less than seven minutes. Yes, I'm going to blow you away with this video. Guys, it was a fun video. I had a lot of, had a lot of fun with it. So, if you want to learn more about men's style, check it out, guys. I've got you covered here at Real Men Real Style with so much great information. If you've got questions, feel free to reach out with me. I'm putting a link to my website down in the description. That's it, guys. Take care. I will see you in the next video. It's one of those events where once you leave, you want to just go instantly change the world tomorrow. It really gets you to take action. This community, this room full of people, it's all about love and it's all about support and knowing that we can do this together and lift each other up. And it's something that I just believe that if we make better men in this world, we're going to have a better world. Hey, what's going on there? Did you grab a ticket? Guys, the virtual ticket. 
20 bucks. This is a ticket that we did start selling for $300. But Aaron's like, you know, make it a no brainer. Make it so cheap that people are like, I mean, are you kidding me? The value that's going to be in this? We're talking over 20 hours of live interaction and content. Find a way get there. And if you can't, then grab that virtual ticket, guys. No brainer. And again, the price will go up. So grab it here soon. That's it, guys. Take care. It's 20 bucks. Come on.